Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Today I'll be comparing arguably the two best belt squats on the market, the Rogue Rhino and the Squat Max MD. Stay tuned. Out of all the equipment I have and have reviewed, I've said the Rhino is my favorite piece. Let's see if it stays that way. I'll start with shipping. I received the Rhino in exactly 14 days from the date I ordered it. It shipped UPS freight. It arrived in perfect condition. All pieces were individually packaged and all parts were accounted for. I received the Squat Max exactly 16 days from the date I placed the order. It went from one freight company to another and then to me. It arrived in excellent condition. Each piece was individually wrapped, carefully packaged, and all parts and pieces were accounted for. Next up, assembly. In my Rhino review, I cover assembly and it was pretty straightforward. I assembled the Rhino in about two and a half hours, and the most difficult aspect of assembly was wielding the foot-long wrenches. As for the Squat Max, it took longer to unbox than to assemble. It only consists of a few pieces, and the only tool needed is a screwdriver to connect the cross piece to the guide rod. There is a small rubber square that rests on the bolts so the loading pin isn't resting on metal. All of the welds look super clean. The four legs fit into the platform, flared out, and then they're secured with pins. The cross piece is then connected to the platform and again secured with pins. The most tricky part of the assembly, and this was still super easy, was attaching the two loading arms, then connecting the two handles to these. A black strap is attached to the loading pin and cross member to ensure the loading pin doesn't come off the guide rod. Brian has recently added a piece of PVC to the guide rod so the belt squat operates more quietly. Bands are included, as are two clips to help ensure the bands don't pop off. Next, let's talk money. Presently with shipping, handling, and taxes, the Rhino costs $2,474. It's gone up almost $500 since I got mine about a year ago. Compared to the Squat Max base model, which costs $1,800 shipping, handling, and taxes included, presently the Squat Max is discounted $100, and with that discount, it's nearly $700 cheaper than the Rhino. If I were to go all out and get everything for the Squat Max, including the chest supported row, J cups, hip thrust, and transformer pin, it costs $2,204, still almost $300 cheaper than the Rhino. I just finished assembling the Squat Max MD and it was very easy to put together. Now that I know what I'm doing, I'm sure I could assemble it in less than five minutes. And right out of the gate, I want to do a quick comparison of the two belt squats. And this is more of a first impression of the Squat Max. I've had the Rhino for well over a year. I have about the same amount of weight on both. On the Rhino, I have 90 pounds and then the weight of the carriage is 27 and a half pounds. And over here on the Squat Max, I have 117 and a half pounds of plates. I have my 12, 11 wedges on both. And on the Squat Max, I have the close stance inlay. And that definitely feels smooth. It definitely feels effective. And I can squat without holding onto the handles, no problem at all. And it's nice having the seat on here. It just makes it easy to connect and disconnect. On over to the Rhino. And this feels equally as good. Although I can't take my hands off of the handles and feel as balanced as I do on the Squat Max. So right out of the gate, both feel effective, both feel great. And it's too early to say that I like one a whole lot more than the other, but they are pretty comparable. I have 207 and a half pounds on both. And with the garage door open and the height of the Squat Max, my head is hitting the garage door. But that definitely feels good. And my stance is a little bit wider on the Squat Max. 
So I felt more inner thigh. I'll widen the stance on the rhino a little bit to mirror the squat stance a little bit better. And both feel really good. Next, I'll compare the footprint of each belt squat. The Rhino has a footprint of 53 inches by 60 and a half inches, and the height of the tower is 78 and a half inches. The Squat Max has a footprint of 45 inches by 39 inches. The platform is 20 inches in height, and the handles are nearly five feet high, and I'm nearly seven and a half feet high when standing on the platform. The difference in width is minimal. The Rhino is about 15 inches longer, and the Squat Max requires nearly a foot of additional head clearance. Next up, the platforms. The Rhino platform is 48 inches by 26 inches, with nearly unlimited stance options as the center cable cutout is only 3 inches wide. I recently cut a 3x4 stall mat to cover the metal and provide more grip. The Squat Max platform is about 44 inches by 28 inches. The center hole is 19 inches wide, and when the close stance inlay is placed on the platform, the center hole is 15 inches wide. Brian has, for the time being, discontinued production of the riser, which enables an even closer stance. When comparing the belts, it's important to note the Rogue belt is modeled after the Squat Max belt. Both belts are great and are nearly identical in length at roughly 60 inches with a 36 inch pad. Both have approximately 3 fourths of an inch thick foam. Both cost $95. However, the Squat Max belt has seven adjustable lengths while the Rogue only has five. The Rogue also has metal D-rings which are slightly easier to connect into than the Squat Max loops. One of the biggest critiques that you'll hear for the Squat Max is that it's somewhat cumbersome to load and unload. So let's see how long it takes to get four 45s on and off. And I am going to separate the 45s by two and a half. This is a lot easier without the seat on. And to save my lower back, I put a foot on the platform. That's 4.45s in 50 seconds. Now let's see how long it takes to get them off. And off in 45 seconds. Now I'm going to compare those times with the Rhino and I won't use two and a half, just 4.45s. And it's a few extra steps to get to the Rhino so we can knock off a couple of seconds from how long it takes to load this. 40 seconds. So taking into account a few extra steps, probably 30 to 35 seconds to load 445s on the Rhino. Now let's see how long it takes to get them off. And with the Rhino, it's a little bit easier to knock out two plates at one time. I can't really do that on the Squat Max as easily. Ultimately, it's not like the Squat Max takes three to four times longer to load and unload, but it's not as user friendly as the Rhino's horizontal horns. So about 40 seconds. Next, the Squat Max really excels when it comes to features and add-ons. First, the stock seat with nine different adjustments is huge for people who like box squatting. Supposedly, a seat is in the works for the Rhino, but who knows if or when it will be released but I imagine it will connect where the holes are. Next, the transformer pin is a $30 add-on that manipulates the weight to make the squat more posterior chain dominant. Both belt squats have a stock band feature where the Rhino uses mostly 41 inch bands and the Squat Max mostly 12 inch bands. I find it much easier to attach the bands on the Rhino as the loading pin when in the top position makes reaching the pegs slightly difficult. Two red bands on the Squat Max gives 240 pounds of band tension. The weight posts on the Rhino are nearly 16 inches long and no weight capacity is listed. The Squat Max loading pin is 21 inches long, no weight capacity is listed, but the piece can handle whatever you want to use. Brian has shown well over 500 pounds in use. Prior to getting the Squat Max, I used a loading pin that has 12 inches of loadable space and a listed 300 pound weight capacity. This worked well, but it's not as convenient as the Squat Max because I have to move the weight back to a standing position from an additional platform and you must hold on to something 
as I tried once before doing this without the lever gym, and it was nearly catastrophic. The guide rod of the Squat Max provides just enough stability to the loading pin. I took off the close stance inlay, so now I have a wider stance. I have the transformer pin in the loading pin. I have four 45s on here separated by two and a half and 27 and a half pounds on top of the 45s, just to account for the weight of the carriage when I do the same amount of weight on the Rhino. And it's really nice having the seat there. It takes a little stress off my joints during that transition. And the transformer pin definitely feels like it hits the back of the leg a little bit more as it changes the moment arm of the belt squat. Now on the Rhino, I have a wider stance to mirror what I was doing over there on the Squat Max. I have four 45s and two fives on here. The two fives are to account for the two and a halfs that were on the Squat Max. So this should be about the same amount of weight since the Rhino supposedly has a one to one pulley ratio. And both feel really good. Again, it's not like one significantly feels better than the other. I like them both a lot. Now, I don't know of anyone who gets a belt squat for other exercises, so I see anything above and beyond belt squats as a bonus. Curls don't work well in the squat max because the strap catches, but they work great on the Rhino. Shrugs work great on both belt squats. Many row variations work well on the Rhino, and the squat max has the chest supported row add-on available. Lunges work great on both platforms, although foot placement options are slightly more limited on the Squat Max. While not super convenient, hip thrusts can be performed on the Rhino, and the Squat Max has a hip thrust add-on available for purchase. Deadlifts can be performed on both belt squats. The Rhino is a cable machine. I like machines, and I especially like cable machines. With that being said, I am anchored to a fixed point on the Rhino, which I honestly don't notice unless I take my hands off of the handles. If my stance is correct, I don't feel like I'm being pulled forward or backward. Rather, I feel I have a vertical line of drive. However, with the Squat Max, it is obvious to me the line of drive is even more vertical than the Rhino because I can remove my hands completely while squatting. Also, there are some purists who only use free weights, and the Squat Max checks that box. As for portability, the Rhino is not. It's over 500 pounds, and once it gets somewhere, it's not easy to move, especially if you are solo. On the other hand, the Squat Max is easy to break down and reassemble. It weighs about 300 pounds, with most of that being the platform. I will move the Squat Max inside during the winter, which isn't an option with the Rhino. And if I really wanted to, it wouldn't be all that difficult to bring on an extended vacation, which I don't take, but some might. The warranty between the two pieces isn't majorly different. The frame of the Rhino has a limited lifetime warranty, and the pulley system has a five-year warranty. As for the Squat Max, the frame has a lifetime warranty, and the guide rod has a one-year warranty, which I would like to see extended, because if something goes wrong with the Squat Max, it will likely be the guide rod. While Rogue hasn't conducted any studies on the Rhino compared to other belt squats, Brian has. In one study, the Squat Max outperformed the Rhino and Pit Shark, but if the person performing the belt squat stood this far back during the actual test, I'm not surprised the score was lower on the Rhino. Also, two studies compared the Squat Max to barbell squats, and the Squat Max proved to activate lower body musculature, similar to barbell squats. I am not affiliated with either company, so all I am interested in is the best belt squat. Interestingly, for the belt squat exercise, I honestly cannot tell that big of a difference between the two. Ultimately, that's a good thing, because in my opinion, you can't go wrong with either. Both are made in the USA, but if you want to save a substantial amount of money, have a piece that you can move easily, have a true piece of free weight equipment, then the Squat Max wins. If you want a tank that will last forever, provides a greater variety of foot placements, and is slightly more user friendly, the Rhino wins. I personally like Brian and Squat Max. He is constantly trying to enhance the product and add new features. Brian is passionate about the Squat Max, and he's got the science to back it up. Also, I like supporting smaller businesses. Before purchasing the Squat Max, I talked directly with Brian. He has always been quick to reply, and he has been accessible after the purchase was made. Rogue is such a large company with so many products, further their prices are rising so drastically, and their new pieces are priced astronomically. In the end, I am glad to have both, and the Squat Max doesn't knock out the champ, but it goes the distance, and I'd be completely happy with just the Squat Max. 
The Squat Max isn't as unshakable as the Rhino, but it's not going anywhere. Also, the powder coat will wear off in a couple of areas like the loading pin and the seat, and from time to time, my plates will ever so slightly clip the platform. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Home Gym Hacks and Reviews, and if any of my videos or reviews have helped you, please consider using one of my affiliate links that can be found in the description of this video. Take care, everyone.